Hello everybody and welcome to the November 2019 edition of the Power Apps Community Call. This month's edition was held at Microsoft Ignite and so throughout the call you will not see any video, you will just hear the podcast recording and the slide deck that went along with it for our call. I'm really happy to be home again here with my little guy Chase, right? <laughs> yeah. So we hope you enjoy the call. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Hope you enjoy the show. Okay, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. Today we are having the Power Apps Community Call uh, live from Microsoft Ignite. It is November 6, 2019, and we're very happy to be here today having a great time at the conference. If you haven't been on our call before, here's a little bit about it. And usually we do this live in person with people around the world and we, we all have screen share going, but that's not an option for us today at Ignite, so we're doing it podcast style. But you can join us every month on the third Wednesday. And in this call, we talk about the latest news and community contributions with Power Apps. We get to meet community experts. There's some here today and product team members another one here today as well, uh, behind Power Apps. And we do technical deep dives and answer questions and just have a lot of fun learning about the technology and sharing our knowledge with each other. So uh, today's friends on the call, I have Christina Wheeler here. And Woo! you can see Christina's <laughs> handle. Hi, Christina. Would you like to introduce yourself real quick? So welcome. I'm Christina Wheeler. I'm a solution architect, independent consultant. Um, live in Georgia, but been traveling all over. Only been home a week. I specialize in everything. I do Power Apps Flow, Power BI. I do Dev, Teams Dev, uh, Power BI Dev, data modeling, building Power Apps, which I actually have one pulled up I've been working on. Awesome. Um, so I love the whole Power Platform. Um, it came from a SharePoint background. And uh, yeah, I did my, this is my very cool. first Ignite. Awesome. Yeah. Welcome. Thank yep. you. So good yep. to be here. Cool. Whoa, is that a warning? I Yes. Emergency it's alert. Amber alert. Yeah. Amber alert. Yeah. We got an amber alert going on. <laughs> Hope that oh. works Recording out. Recording okay. live. Yes. <laughs> yeah. there, keeps okay. going again. So uh, today we uh, well thanks Christina appreciate that <laughs> and it, it our background is so similar both yeah. SharePoint yeah. Office 365 and now Power Platform 2 and. And I also get in a lot of Azure as well, but yep. uh, on to Ryan. Ryan, thanks for joining us today. Of course, thanks for the invite. Uh, so I'm Ryan, I run the product team for Power Apps, uh, and uh, I guess this is my third or fourth Ignite. I joined Microsoft about four years ago mm -hmm. um, uh, when Power Apps was still uh, a hope and a dream and uh, uh, you know a, a twinkle in, in everybody's eye yeah um, and uh, it's been a really fun ride to sort of uh, you know follow that journey through uh, you know early release and early preview and GA and uh, just some of the incredible growth we've seen over the last couple of years it has so been incredible yeah. and not just the technology yeah and what we can do with it already but this community absolutely and Great. like yeah. we wouldn't even yeah. all be gathered here t yeah. today talking about this or have this call yeah. if there weren't so many awesome people out yeah. there supporting no 100 100 and mm -hmm. i think uh, one of the i had just did a session and my, my you know all the great tech that's coming to power apps and everything is shipping but my final point was just the best part about this thing is not technology at all it's yeah. people it's the people that are getting excited about what you can do and helping each other out like mm -hmm. I'm just constantly uh, amazed by how generous this community is and how uh, you know frequently people will just get on the phone nine time zones away, help somebody with a problem. Yeah. Uh, just because, you know, I think at the end of the day, and this is what keeps me going here, like we're all just tinkers and problem solvers and, and makers at heart and the ability to go do that together is huge. So it is. Um, Great. And it's yeah. a ton of fun. That's too, super fun. At the yeah. same time. For yeah. sure. Yeah. We uh, will, he is not in the booth with us yet, but Sarah Gluka will also be joining us today. He's presenting on Flow cool. as we speak, and cool. so he's going to be uh, yeah. coming over real quick. And then finally, yeah. myself, I'm, I'm Todd Baginski, and uh, you've probably, if you've been on this call before, <laughs> you know who I am, and, and I work with Office 365 and SharePoint and the Power Platform and Azure, and just love building custom business solutions to solve all kinds of problems. Awesome. And, uh, 
after a background of SharePoint uh, over a decade and a half, uh, yeah. I feel so reinvigorated with, with Power Apps. Uh, you know, cool. anytime you get something new in your career, yeah. it's a lot of fun, and I'm yeah. just really enjoying being part of it. I would say the, uh, the Power Platform has really, uh, it's passion. So I yeah. had passion for SharePoint, but I did SharePoint for a long time, totally. right? Yeah. And, uh, and now my passion, I just love the passion of the community and it's helped my passion with technology of mm -hmm. just with getting involved with all these other products and building these awesome solutions. So, And awesome. I've gotten to see the evolvement you know, right. from the beginning right. to where it is now right. and it's yeah. you know leaps and bounds and it will continue yeah. to get better and better that's awesome and it's just great to see the passion that everybody has and yeah. user voice too of, of the feedback that yep. people are giving and, and mm. voting and all this yeah. stuff so just it's all about community and people totally totally agreed good times good times so we have this announcement here as i mentioned we're, we're here live in the expo hall well, we're live. Are <laughs> 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 you listening to Recording us? Really live. Recording live. That's yes. Right. <laughs> um, so uh, we're in the expo hall here at Ignite, and we'd just like to say thanks for listening to the podcast. Uh, we recorded it at Ignite, at Ignite uh, and we'd like to so thank Microsoft for giving away s Microsoft Surface earbuds to our listeners. So you can win some great Microsoft Surface earbuds, and to enter, go to aka.ms slash podcast sweepstakes. Oh, aka.ms slash ms ignite slash podcast sweepstakes. We have a couple different versions oh, of it. Oh, you may have on the paper <laughs> in my <laughs> hand. The correct one. On there, yes. So try yes. them both, so whichever one I'm works. I'm glad you saw that. <laughs> For those of you listening and watching, the, the, the URL. It's one of those two. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe both. I'll put it in the comments on the, on the video when we post you it. You have to go to one to win the left earbud and the other to win the right earbud. <laughs> <laughs> and you may only win one. You may only. <laughs> just, it's, you know, we're a very <laughs> inclusive community here. So <laughs> make sure. Uh, you if you'd like to enter for that, go and do so before uh, December 15. Maybe they'll arrive even in time for Christmas. There you go. So what we're going to talk about today is the first thing is the Power Apps Demo Extravaganza. So yes. this was something that I got the idea for a few months ago and organized. And awesome. we have a winner. We have okay. a winner. So we're going to okay. announce that winner yeah. now today. And um, they are going to go, if they can get themselves up to Seattle, okay. they are going to go on a fishing trip with Charles Sterling. <laughs> and well, that is an honor. Take you out. Yeah. And, and a uh, terror and an honor. <laughs> <laughs> and catch some massive fish about five miles off. Shore. Yep, yep. So uh, yep. That, sh that should be fun. And then uh, today, you know, I, I, when I contacted you both before yeah. this, I said, I really want to find a way to make this about the community. Sure. We, yes. we could sit here and talk shop and stuff all day, but yeah. this call is about the community. So we put the call out on Twitter and on LinkedIn and, cool. and said, hey, do you have a question? Yeah. Anything about Power Apps? And, and you replied, hey, ask me anything, yeah. which is awesome. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I didn't even know what the yeah. acronym meant. I had <laughs> <laughs> the American Medical Association. <laughs> what are you talking exactly about? Exactly what I thought. That's funny. <laughs> so uh, today it, it is all yeah. about the community. So all of our questions, yeah. uh, except one I interjected, have come from the community. Yeah. And uh, so we're going to go through and, and discuss them and get those answers to folks. So they can get their questions answered. So let's talk real quick about the demo extravaganza. A quick recap, we had over two dozen makers actually cool. submit for that. Cool. Very nice. And I actually yeah. didn't know I was gonna have to put that much time into yeah. it and like <laughs> yeah. corralling all the entries and the and things, but it turned out really fun and I didn't realize that many people wanted to be on a boat with Chuck. <laughs> 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 in just two weeks. In just two weeks. Yeah, yeah. in just two That's weeks, amazing. two dozen people yeah. <laughs> uh, across the world. And and then so yeah. we, we opened up voting after that and yeah. we said, All right, here's Here's all these cool power apps. Let the community decide which ones will make it to the final, if mm. you will. And so there were 405 people actually voted awesome. at the beginning. Very nice. And then uh, 400, and I think it was two people voted actually after we had them on the call okay. last month. Cool. And they, they all had about 15 minutes to demonstrate demo, yeah. and walk people through and say what it was used for, cool. how they built it. Cool. And then, uh, then the community selected the winner. Awesome. So here are the folks who participated. And in my opinion, everybody's a winner. The community's nice. a winner. 
all these guys on here are a winner. Everyone yeah. who submitted is a winner because everyone got to see everyone's stuff and learn from it and get Who's ideas. Who's on the brainstorm bus? That is a great app name. Did you see that one? I, 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 I did miss that one. I got to look that one up. So yeah. a little recap of yeah. them. Prashant, he lives yeah. down in Australia, and his was okay. an app that allows visitors to sign into a health club. Cool. So he was cool. enabled, a, enabled yep. that process. I think he said he built it in a half hour. Awesome. Yeah. So he's really quick. Awesome. Uh, Bryant, I had the pleasure of meeting Bryant yeah. last night. Awesome. Did you yeah, see I him did. I met him as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Real nice guy. Yeah. So he built Who's on the Brainstorm Bus, and Brainstorm is his company. Okay, cool. And he yeah. also called it My Culture app, and this nice. app was pretty neat. Yep. And yeah. it allowed you to look at pictures of people in your company and yeah. it gamified it so you could memorize people's names in your company. Nice. Nice. That's and cool. So That's I, cool. I dare you to do that on the Power Apps team. <laughs> <laughs> we need it on the Power Apps team. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people there. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next was John Holton. Uh -huh. And John built a app that's used by field personnel okay. in his company. So his okay. company is in the oil and gas industry. Okay. And this app allows people to go around to all their different pipelines and the terminals on those pipelines and do inspections cool. and things like that. Cool. Uploading pictures. Classic Power Apps use case. Yeah. Exactly, right? Yeah. Field enablement. Yep. And so that was John's another real slick app. Daniel Zapp, Daniel Christian. Uh, Daniel Love Daniel. Yeah. yeah. Good guy. Great guy. Yeah. Yeah. Great guy. Daniel shares a, um, uh, a passion for not just power apps, but also shares something else with me. He <laughs> loves decorating his house with Christmas lights. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually have an every... <laughs> we actually have an every uh, two week meeting, yeah. Daniel and I do. That's to awesome. What we're to doing to discuss Christmas, Christmas light strategy. <laughs> oh, that's do. great. We do. That's great. <laughs> and we're like, oh, yeah. did you do this? Oh, that's sure great. How that's Are great. you bringing IoT into yeah. it and AI? And stuff? Not yet, but oh, I'm oh, actually trying to take it up a notch. I'm trying to figure out how to build a power we app so I can control them sitting out in my front yard. Nice. We need to connect you, uh, Ryan Jones, who does the CDS team. Yeah, uh, is a, is a major Christmas light aficionado. He's as all in it too. I need to get him uh, into your bi-weekly rhythm. Do yeah. you know Kathy Do? I do. Oh, oh yeah. You do? Yeah, okay, so, yeah. so Kathy yeah. does as well. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. This is a thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. You've got the, the overlit uh, community call after this one, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Everyone will be. Awesome. And so yeah. uh, Daniel's app was called the Power Apps In Touch app. And his app was uh, actually using Legos to showcase like how to someone yeah. in a Lego store could display Legos um, and information and if, if they were in stock, the cost, things like that to cool. people on the floor. Cool. But his app really wasn't focusing on that kind of floor selling scenario. Okay. It was more focusing and that's why he called it the InTouch app. It was look at all these cool things you can do mm. with the user interface. Cool. So nice. he had a cool loading piece going on and he had yeah. different fly out menus cool nice. all kinds of really cool theming and different things cool. like that very cool hey hey, hey. yeah Sorry I'm late. Welcome. good you had a session Welcome. man hey you had a good excuse <laughs> <laughs> uh. welcome so that's awesome serge is here now yep. how did your session go oh, all right there oh. you go. Do we got you on there let's see here oh Yep, say, are, are, yeah, are, can yep. we hear him? Are you turned down here? Let's try that now. Try now. Yeah. So oh, uh, there we go. Very go. crowded, many, many <laughs> questions. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was very fun, yes. Good. I go. enjoyed it. And you hustled Good. over. You had a yeah. long walk, too. I yeah, know. and oh, oh right. super long, yes. Cool. Yes. <laughs> so, welcome. Yeah, do you want to do a little introduction of yourself? We, uh, we kind of went through that already, but... Uh, we I'll said lots of things you. about you while you weren't here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I can imagine, yes. So <laughs> I'm uh, Dr. Flo, so I'm a Belgian MVP. Okay. An MVP yeah. in Office 65, uh, like you. Uh, yep. And yeah. And uh, MVP in business application. So cool. And I create more enterprise uh, solution with awesome. Flo. Cool. Awesome. Cool. And yeah. cool. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, the best thing about being Dr. Flo is you don't have a huge amount of student debt that you had to get to make <laughs> build that, that <laughs> to doctor. To be that kind of doctor. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's right. true. That's yeah. true. <laughs> so I have to ask, are you still going to be Dr. Flo or are we calling you Dr. Automator now? I'm still thinking about it. So. <laughs> Dr. Power? Dr. Power? Yeah, Dr. We, still Power? we still create Flo. We still create Flo. With that's flow. true. That is so true. you're still Dr. Flo. Flo is still a good asset, right? Yes. That is true. Yes. So, um, yeah. so I might be become a doctor Automate or poor automate. <laughs> 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 Actually, I get used to the w to the term and to the yeah, new name. Yeah. And yep. Actually, it's okay. Cool. 
Cool. All right. Yeah. We're just going through the different folks who participated in the Power App demo extravaganza. Oh, okay. So this yeah. was a contest we held on community sharing their Power Apps, and we're just going through the different folks who made it to the final now, and then we're about to announce who won the who won the contest. Okay, so it, it went far below the Hello World uh, application. So oh <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Oh oh yes yeah. they did. Oh yeah. 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 And then so so we just talked about Daniel's app and Reza's app. Uh, Rez is down in Texas, Kay. and he took the Meeting Capture app, which is one of the Power App sample templates, mm -hmm. and I had the pleasure of working on that yep. with Ryan, yep. and, yeah, and he took it and he souped it up. And we were just joking around before yeah. the podcast that yeah. we had a limited time to build it, and we cut a lot of scope yep. out as yep. we build it. Yep. Um, and then Reza added in basically everything we <laughs> cut during our initial <laughs> brainstorm, and then he added more. Awesome. And so he awesome. made a super duper uh, meeting capture power app. And, and for those cool. folks who haven't seen it, this power app, you can fire it up when you have a meeting, yeah. and it pulls in information, tells you what the agenda is, who's in the meeting. You can capture notes, make tasks. Cool. And then when you hit the export button, It'll make those tasks in Planner. It'll put the notes in OneNote. It'll cool. send a summary email to all the attendees. And then one little last piece of follow-up is it allows you to schedule a follow-up meeting. Cool. And it uses the APIs yeah. that are available in the Outlook connector to find out everyone you put in the follow-up meeting, when can they meet you. That's pretty cool. So That's you can cool. easily, instead of having yeah. the usual, hey, uh, what, what, what's you your calendar meet? say? Yeah, you know? exactly. Oh, yeah. Just boom, got a meeting. Cool. So. Can, can we get a drum roll? Yeah. I don't know if we can hear it or not. There we go. Drum roll, drum roll. Our winner is Reza. Reza! Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. You yeah. get to be on a boat with Chuck. Yes. <laughs> catch, Good luck. And, catch giant yeah. fish. <laughs> and you may win a shirt if you get a little seasick. The prize is yeah. a, a fishing trip in uh, out of Seattle, or near Seattle. Oh, okay. In, uh, I, what, I think he was what, something catch, shores, Washington. Some Ocean shores, Washington. Ocean shores, Washington. Yes. That's it. So he does. this is quite yes. an honor. Fishing yeah. what? Uh, <laughs> going out for big fish in the ocean. Okay. Have you yeah. seen his fish? He I catches they're pretty some impressive. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Nice. Very, very, so very awesome nice. Awesome way to go. <laughs> and fish. and yes. I'm just going to go backslide real quick and say thanks again to, to all these folks. That's super cool. Taking their time yeah. yep. to not only submit for it, but get on and show people what they got. And uh, it, everybody wins as awesome. a result. So we're hoping to do another one of these in like March or April. Cool. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. I think Maybe it's we can line it up with the BizApp Summit thing. and, uh, oh, yeah, and we can do some judging well, live or something like that, right? And I will actually should like be in country this time. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Cool. There is interaction yeah. with Flo in this, uh, in this meeting capture? No, uh, there's, there's no Flo, right? The there meeting is? capture, I'm trying to remember yeah. if there is a Flo built into that one. Uh, no, I don't, I don't believe there is. No. Hmm. Uh, it for it a lot of the sample apps, we actually kept Flo out because of the way that the provisioning works out of the Power App portal. Uh, when you go yeah. deploy it. Um, well, those all samples were all built yeah. before yeah. we had solution awareness and packaging. Oh, and you know, like that was right. all, that it was, was so back in the, ago. we were chiseling apps out of rock. It was just, a, it was <laughs> much more, <laughs> it was an earlier time. That's it was right. an earlier time. That's right. Yeah. I still had all my hair back then. <laughs> 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 so on to yeah. the next part of our call, and this is all of our different community questions. So cool. we put the word out on Twitter and LinkedIn and asked everybody to give us questions and it's kind of funny I, I was telling ryan last night yeah. and christine i was like i'm worried N no one's replied yet <laughs> <laughs> no what we're going to talk about but i yeah. woke up this morning and lo and behold we have almost a dozen questions great so here we go yeah. and uh the first one this one actually comes from me um, <laughs> <laughs> so we're working in with a client right now in a government tenant okay and yeah. The Power Apps, we noticed the Power Apps forms and the Flows button and the SharePoint list yep. weren't there. Yeah. And so we were wondering, like, when will that be turned on? Yeah. So uh, this is a obviously a hot topic, especially as we we do support standalone Power Apps in, in GCC moderate and, uh, and shortly GCC high environments. Mm -hmm. um, we are also working towards the, the even higher level than that. There's multiple sort of levels of clearance of, of government uh, sovereign cloud. Um, in, in moderate, though, the limitation right now is we don't support the embedded experiences inside of SharePoint Online. 
Um, and we were talking just before the call. There's a lot of complexity there about how authentication works, about how some of the backing services that we rely on from Azure need to be there, or be ready, or be worked around to get there. Um, but the end of it uh, is uh, we are targeting uh, January, early next calendar year, for the embedded experiences for both Power Automate and Power Apps in, in GCC Moderate. Um, GCC High will trail that probably by a few months. We're working on a more precise timeline. Cool. Um, so that's what we're tracking to right now. Um, uh, there's always chance that we'll hit some unforeseen bump with a dependency deep in the stack, but uh, but we have pretty good line of sight to, to making that work early next year. That's really good to know. Yeah. That's right around the yeah. corner too. I know it'll be. Uh, I keep saying the end of the year like it's far away, and then I realize that it's uh, right around <laughs> it's the corner. It's pretty much yeah. Yeah. What, what you like can do in the yeah. meantime is yeah. create custom colon in SharePoint list and put link to yeah. uh, flow right. So yeah. that works as well. Yes. So for instance, oh. in case of approval, yeah. my my customer li don't like having to go to the flow menus and start right. a flow. They want something embedded in their list. So what I do is I have a custom column with a link to the approval yeah. flow. Yeah. Gotcha. So they click there and they start the flow. And also I have another column where people can get more details about the list item. So they click yeah. and there is a power apps that show up yep. with more details about the list. Like approval, for instance. You can yeah. follow a complete approval just by yeah. clicking on the link in the SharePoint list and... We do support hyperlink technology in the government yeah. cloud and uh, we do have <laughs> Flow and <laughs> <laughs> it's very advanced. Um, and we do have Flow and perhaps running standalone there. So you're right, like yes. being able to link out from those lists um, is, uh, it, you know, makes a lot of sense. And as much as we have very broad adoption in the commercial clouds of, of Power Apps and Flow embedded in SharePoint lists, mm -hmm. but there there is significantly more usage of standalone apps or flows that connect to SharePoint on the back end, which is part of why we prioritized the way we did. You know, there was some tech complexity with getting the embedded experiences there. We didn't want to hold everything back. Let's ship what we can, and then yep. we'll, we'll yeah. catch up as we go. So. So, uh, a little yeah. bit more context on this one, just yeah. so people understand another possible workaround, yeah. is the reason we came uh, up with this question was, yeah. this particular list is being migrated off an on-premises uh, environment sure. that has yep. a, an info path yeah. form. Uh -huh. You knew that oh, was coming, right? I've, 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 coming. I've heard of this <laughs> info <laughs> path. <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes, that was back in those, <laughs> even before this, the yes, chisel it's true. Days. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The Bronze Age. So <laughs> in, in our scenario, <laughs> in our scenario um, we actually did some tests on this the last few days, and we used some SharePoint framework extensions okay. to modify the menu. So we actually mm. modified the menu, and it's possible to modify the menu and drop in a new link on there okay. that says new item in Power Apps, yeah. and then open up your Power App. Okay. Cool. And a new cool. tab. So that's cool. a way to jump into a yep. form if you yep. need more than out of the box. Mm, that's cool. And then yeah. another thing, I didn't know you could do this. Um, our, our dev, uh, Theo, uh, figured out. It's probably been around for a while. But he figured out that when you click on an item and select an item in the mm -hmm. SharePoint list, that you can actually drive what you, buttons you display with the SharePoint extensions in that menu right. as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so he lit up, if you clicked... Um, on an item, it lit up an edit in Power Apps, and then cool. it would call the Power mm. App. Cool. Nice. And yeah. then you can just pass. You use SharePoint Framework for that, right? Yes, right. that's yes. right. Yes. Got it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You pass the link item or something. Exactly, cool. yeah. and then you deep item link ID. it into yeah. Yeah. the f mm. Power App. Yeah. You know, that's a cool example of, uh, you know, we, we see this a lot in Power Apps in general. Like, a lot of people are starting to ask questions like, should I use SPFX or Power Apps? Should I use, you know, should I write this in JavaScript or Power Apps? Should mm -hmm. I use Azure or Power Apps? Uh, and I increasingly just start responding to those. I'm going to build a house. Should I use a hammer or a saw? Uh, you know, use what use the right tool. You yes. know, like yes. there's and and be able to use them together. Mm -hmm. Write code when you need to, not when you don't, and be able to figure out how to how to walk that line. So I love that example of just getting creative with the tools that do exist. Yeah, um, uh, that's pretty cool. And it's neat that there's yeah. so many tools that exist. Yeah, you right. Can yeah. Always yeah. find a, some workaround yeah. nowadays. Cool. Um, next question. Any updates on responsive Canvas app pages? Mm. Yeah, so this is mm. something we've been talking about for a while. and We like to work out loud and show what's coming. Um, uh, it is still something we're actively working on. We, we kind of plan and, I mean, we ship every week, every month, but we kind of plan big things in what we call semesters internally. That sort of lines up to the release plans that come out uh, twice a year. Um, and as you've probably been following, we kind of sometimes we'll chunk up some of the bigger things into April and uh, and uh, October, mm -hmm. um, especially the things that have a 
mandatory impact on end users. Uh, we call those tier one features. Mm. Um, uh, things that, uh, you know, if I'm running a really scaled deployment of power apps and I've got a call center of 30,000 people running on it, we don't want to just be moving your buttons around or your colors around without ample warning and, and you, know, uh, uh, you know, time to react. And so, uh, anyway, so we have that cadence. Mm -hmm. um, so we are working on the custom page in this, in this sort of semester that we call, right? And so that kind of spans between now and April. Um, uh, really, it, it's complicated. It's the wave that sort of starts in April and rolls out for the next couple months. But, um, uh, but we are doing work towards that in the semester. It's not one of those tier one features, so it's going to ship in increments. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, you can do this now. We were talking about earlier. You can yeah. do it manually. You can write your manually, formulas, yes. right? But that's um, complicated. But it's complicated yeah, and it's tedious. Yep. Um, so the first thing that we'll start to do, actually, and you'll see this uh, hopefully by actually next month, is we'll start to roll out a few purpose-built templates that have the responsive formulas already done for you. And the first one we'll start with actually is a template for an app embedded in Teams. Mm. And so you'll be able to go say, make me an app for Teams, and we'll start you off with a set of Canvas screens that have the regions already defined and have the formulas already defined. And you can go futz with them if you want and make right. them what you want. So that's a baby step. Um, what will come after that is a, is a page that effectively has regions in it. That, you know, and rather than imagining the page as one whole Canvas as a monolith, the page has a couple of canvas regions in it that have I all the properties that. of the canvas, mm. um, but they know how to reflow, right? That's and smart. so, and so that's the that's the sort of roadmap there. The other thing that we'll do then, and this is actually really key to converging the model-driven world and the canvas world, is to be able to make those pages included in a model-driven app. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so you can take. Uh, you know, a, a model driven form, a model driven view, but then include one of these custom pages. So it'll show up in the same navigation. You can link to it and from it. Uh, we have a lot of people who sort of get, you know, they'll build an entire really complicated Canvas app, uh, but all they really needed were four forms over CDS and three lists over CDS, and then just one screen that they wanted to be custom. Mm -hmm. And so right now you sort of have this forced choice. Yes. You know, you're like, am I going to. Yeah, you know, actually, it'd be faster. It's usually faster to if you just need forms and lists. It's actually usually much faster to use CDS and like model-driven apps, mm -hmm. and you get much richer forms and lists than mm -hmm. you do on the canvas today. Um, but typically, it's been really difficult then when you want to build that one custom screen. Very so, custom, yes. right. So, so being able to have this page and have it participate in this bigger ecosystem really goes a long way to then being able to converge those capabilities. Um, so That's going to be well, amazing. Yeah. That so is that's what be very we amazing. that's what actually what yeah. we need. No? I mean yeah, we've been waiting yeah. for that for mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I don't want to build this up into like the custom page is gonna solve world peace and <laughs> hunger and, and the climate and everything. Like it will be increments, right? And so you like there's there's actually we're doing our best right now to isolate these pieces of work and make them each independently shippable. Take a canvas thing, put it in a model thing, ship it. Take a canvas screen, give it regions, ship it. You know, like start to over time and then the next step is componentizing more of those model components so the form is not one big monolith, but it's a component that I can put into a page. Yeah. Um, and so those are all independent pieces of work that are going on as we go. Um, and we have different teams working on different parts of it and, and sort of prioritizing, obviously, as they go and focusing on quality first and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But uh, but you'll just see progressively over the next you know six to eight months that we'll, we'll really work on towards this vision. Um, uh, and so it's much more than just responsiveness. It, yes. is, it is really about, that's a piece of the puzzle, but it's responsiveness, it's componentization, mm -hmm. and then it's just being able to, to composite all that stuff more easily together. What yes. I brought up with Ryan yeah. earlier was how yeah. I've been doing a lot of responsive yeah. with my controls and yeah. doing a grid and putting in the formulas yeah. to take the width and then divide. But then if you start doing the wizzy wig drag and drop to move your controls you lose that formula. You lose everything. Yes. Yeah, so. you have to yeah. Yeah. We've had enough people throw chairs at us over this <laughs> issue. <laughs> <laughs> we are working on a way to lock those formulas and, yes. and and we're actually we'll probably roll out to some of the community for some early testing when we get a little further because it's a pretty complicated interaction. Do I want to always explicitly lock it? Do I want the behavior implied? Mm. Uh, do I want to lock it per formula? Or do I want to lock it per control? Mm. Like, there's actually a lot of different ways to slice this problem, and uh, uh, it may take us a couple reps to get it right. But it, so it is, I had yeah. a conversation with yeah. Rob Bogue, and he said yep. what he's been doing is actually setting the formula on one card, yep. and then setting the rest so if i've got that formula and i want yep. that formula to be the same then i'm just for the width i'm referencing referring to referring it, yeah. to yep. that other card yep 
So yeah. then at least if I lose, uh, yep. if, it, if I drag that one and lose it, the main one's reference, I'm only saving yes. Yeah, yes. just one. So that's what I'm going to end up. I actually mm. had my Power App open. I was going to update that. Yeah, that's a that's a fairly common pattern, particularly yeah. inside forums. We also see people doing that at a meta level inside apps. Like it's not an uncommon pattern for an app to have a hidden screen at the end mm. that Which sets, I do that too. you know, yep. border radius and rounding. Yep. I mean, you basically, this is sort of a low-code CSS uh, yeah, pretty much. Yes. kind of, right? Kind of, that yes. then you bind individual controls yes. to reference. We are doing some work in the theming area as well that's going to make that a little easier over time. Mm. Um, but uh, uh, but no, that, that concept of reference is, uh, is, is definitely a powerful one. So you can change it once and reuse it everywhere. Yep. Um, we also see people starting to tinker with canvas components this way. Um, and have canvas components that are not themselves UI components, but basically define things like variables and logic that then can be referenced in other parts of the app. Mm -hmm. um, and as we work on canvas components, we're sort of making sure that that, uh, that sort of invisible component is going to work really well, right. as well as the, the ones that are pure UI controls. Sure. So. Yeah, cool. Two big takeaways yeah. out of everything we just talked about for me is the first one, th consider what you just said. Yeah. In sometime here in the future, yeah. there is going to be the ability to write no code yeah. responsive web page. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. Like that's yeah. crazy if no, you totally, think about yeah. it. I mean, we've I all mean, written CSS totally, and other things, totally. and we know yeah. how much code goes into yep. that. That's well, amazing. I mean, look, and you can do it. A lot of people, you know, haven't played as much with model-driven apps or with portals because they're newer. But like, those are responsive by default today, and and it's actually because of the way they're built. They're more declared or generated over metadata or the logical definition of a form. So you, you there's a trade-off. You don't get as much control over exactly where the button is right. and exactly what the border rate is, but because you give that control up to the system, then we know how to make good decisions about how yeah. to lay things out. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot of people benefit from that uh, uh, you know, type of application. Uh, but again, you, know, you have people who, for just a simple couple screens of forms and lists, often you can get a much richer app in the modeled space faster. Uh, it's a little counterintuitive to people who grew up in the mm -hmm. Canvas world because it's just a different, uh, yeah. it's a different beast. You have to think a little bit more conceptually about what you're getting as opposed to just building it piece by piece. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but it's worth a tinker if uh, if you haven't been there recently because you can do quite a lot. And the, the second yeah. big thing you yeah. said about dropping a Canvas app into a model yep. app. Um, Right now, we are building an app for, for Microsoft, yeah, actually. Yeah. And our solution has one Canvas app and two model-driven apps. Cool. And different users use them. Cool. But the, reas the reason we have uh, the Canvas app and the model-driven app yeah. right now is because of our user interface requirements. I see. Yeah. And not wanting to go to the PCF, that, that oh, route. to right. Right. to customize model. Right. right. So actually, once this capability is alive, that yeah. solution will go from three power apps down to two power apps. Cool. Nice. Cool. So Very everybody cool. always loves that, right? Those yeah. Less, less to manage, exactly. less overhead, less to break. Sure, yeah. All that good stuff. Cool. So moving on. Good question here. Can power apps components be shared tenant wide? Can admins approve those components, mm. which will then be available for usage across the whole tenant? It actually says even across across or tenants. Tenants, so yes. Tenants, yes. Yeah. So the I assume this question is maybe that the Canvas components, the low-code components, but both Canvas components and ProDev PCF components, they basically lo will look, act, and work like the same thing. To a to an end user, don't really know that one was written by a, a you know React Dev or JavaScript Dev, and another was written by somebody working on the Canvas, um, and they'll model that way. Like they show up in the same component tab. Um, uh, as they come in. Uh, as they go GA for Canvas, uh, they're both in preview now. Mm -hmm. um, as we make them generally available, part of why we have not marked them generally available yet is because they will be first class citizens in the solutioning system. Mm -hmm. um, same solutioning system that we didn't have back in the Stone Ages when we were building those, those Canvas right. apps. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but that means when I do that, then I can export them along with all the other assets as independent things. Mm -hmm. I can then you know, more easily have a library of them that I bring into individual environments. So it'll be a little bit easier to say, here's the header and footer and splash screen for our company. Uh, this is the Canvas header. Let me go put that everywhere. Um, and uh, and then you know give makers a way to go pull that into their environment, um, and then it also means that solutioning system is the way that you put things on AppSource. 
uh, and that's sort of our internal mic marketplace engine to, to Microsoft. Um, so that is a way to the last part of the question that you'll be able to then expose those components to, to external parties as well um, across tenants. Um, Great. Today you can only do that with a top level app, but basically you'll, you'll, you'll be able, as once we solve the technology piece of it, then it'll be possible then to move those things around across tenants as well. That's great. Uh, great news. Yeah. I love the components. Th that's the other amazing yeah. thing about the Power Apps, right? Like if, if uh, you can't do what you need to do in the Power App Designer, like you said, you've got all these tools. Just right. open some code if you right. need to. Right. We are far from the ActiveX world, right? ActiveX, Silverlight. Yeah, yeah, oh man. Yeah. Uh, it'll yeah. come back one day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would love to go power, on about this silver great silverlight. Silver 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 <laughs> <laughs> I made one time. But we'll you know, people it. build vintage furniture with reclaimed wood and stuff. I feel mm -hmm. like we're, why don't we have a vintage app market? You know, like that's true. <laughs> right, there's vintage video games. Absolutely, I mean, we have vintage hats on right now. You yeah, know, yeah you do. Yeah, that's that's right. you're still concatenated. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't updated my formula. <laughs> <laughs> That's Let's funny. see, number four. <coughs> this one related to flow here. So yeah. will the respond to power apps using response action, which in turn returns an array, yeah. uh, from the power app automate, also known previously <laughs> as flow, <laughs> uh, be considered a standard connector since it's an integration between power apps yeah, and flow? One, eh? Yeah, it's a premium one at the moment. Now you said at the moment, so does at that mean moment, it's yes. gonna continue to stay premium uh, or will that change? We already asked the question, we don't have the answer as far as I know. Yeah. We don't know. So we we need a way to return objects uh, and not right. just single value yeah. and flow to power apps. Huh? So no yeah. you have to concatenate everything yeah. and yeah. so yeah, we need that. I we need Consider it as standard. I think. I consider many <laughs> things <laughs> standard. In your, in your yes. environment. Yeah. For <laughs> 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 <You're> illegal <laughs> in the environment. <laughs> Chris, Chris That's funny. Applying for the license. <laughs> <the team. laughs> yeah. what, what's your name again? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, I this like is, to this is a I good like question. Look, we should, we should, uh, I know we've had th some of this conversation on some of the NDA forums. Like, this is something we need to just bottom out on. I think the spirit of the licensing is that, uh, you know, when I'm using Flow in the context of Power Apps, even for premium stuff, it should be included in the, in the context of that app. Mm -hmm. um, and also that premium is really about advanced data sources, right? And so if that Flow is on the other side, talking to SQL or Oracle or, you know, DB2 or CDS or whatever, then it would be premium by association, right? Because I'm still, I'm still acting in the context of the user. If that flow is going and pulling data from a premium source, then, then that would be premium anyway. And honestly, most people who are using that flow connector to return a response action today are doing it over premium data sources. Right. Like doing it as sort of this, uh, you know, I, I hate to say middle tier, but sort of this manipulation layer underneath right. the in-app itself. Don't, don't, don't yeah. underestimate yeah. the popularity of SharePoint. Oh, yeah, <laughs> no, 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 I know, I know. Um, I'm just saying that, and no, absolutely. Because yeah. it's free. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right, right, right. right. Exactly. Well, and, and <laughs> peace. Like, there are more so more. many good app <laughs> scenarios that are great over SharePoint and always will be. Yes. Um, it, it's just the people that tend to build apps over template tend to build apps, and this is all tendency just based on yes. evidence, right? Yes. Tend to build apps that are, are a little bit simpler, one or two tables, you know, like, that's where SharePoint really shines. Mm -hmm. When you've got, you know, you're working with eight or nine different lists and you're trying to model relationships yes. and you're trying to graft you know, views, or you're trying to mimic uh, relational data, data, or you're data. trying to mimic, uh, you know, uh, role-based access control. Like, that's where you're really trying to start to rebuild the features of a more advanced data source uh, in SharePoint uh, with, with some duct tape. And, and some people can <laughs> get there. Some people can totally get there. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but, uh, but that is really where the, usually there's a value line there, <laughs> right? Where if I need an app that has, you know, nine tables and complex relationships and access control, you know, usually there's some some reason why I need that sophistication, and right. usually there's some some trigger there that would send me towards premium. Do, but do you think you know it would be possible yeah. to have yeah. that connector if you used it with SharePoint be considered standard, but if you used it with the premium data source? I think that is premium? absolutely a fair question to ask. Yeah. Or yeah. be or be yeah. able to use the per flow license. Right. 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 Just for the flow. Just part, for that flow part. Yeah. But yes. not for yeah. the end user because actually does yes. not use real premium data, mm, right? So yeah. in this case. Yeah. yeah. 
So, for instance, yeah. I, do the, I, I asked a question to Char Lama yesterday. Yep. Because in my session, there yeah. was a use case where a user wants to create a team, yep. so he has a power apps, okay. just fill in the basic yep. data. Yep. Okay. We call a flow, the flow yep. called the graph, etc. Sure. Yep. And the question is, it does not make sense to have to buy premium for every user in the company. Mm. Just having a per flow license mm. is normal, it's legal. Right. I mean right. You see? So, right. you right. pay, right? Right. right. It's uh, company wide. Right. Yeah. But, but. Every user should not have to pay for, for yeah. it. They uh, don't. Uh, Actually, it's legal. No, it is. It so is. That's, why that's exactly what the portfolio exactly. is Exactly. Yeah. We should be able yeah. to use Perflo on Power Apps. If you don't directly yeah. use If you're not directly calling a premium source. connector right. as the exactly. user, right? Exactly. And so for scenarios where that indirection makes yeah. sense, and there are, there are many fair. scenarios where that makes sense, I think that would be yeah. fair. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think yeah. what I'm seeing, too, is that uh, a lot of organizations that are brand new to Power Apps, they're starting out on the SharePoint side because they're not sure if they want to invest oh, the money course. yet, right? Of course, So yeah. it's kind of yeah. getting their feet wet and right. saying, let me build a little solution here to get comfortable with Power Apps. I'll do it against SharePoint because it's included in my licensing right now. Yep. And then determine if I want to actually move forward with Power oh, Apps. Oh, absolutely. And then they yeah. can look at and say, okay, now let's start looking yeah. into model-driven or you know, right. the CDS and things like that. Well, and not only that, I mean, there, I, I will be shocked if we ever have more apps over CDS than we do over SharePoint or Excel, right? right? Every Millions and millions of people have SharePoint and Excel, are familiar with them. It's very easy to get started. There's lots of valuable data there. Yep. It's exactly why we've made it a feature <laughs> of Office 365 and included right. it in additional charge. So there's no, in no way are we trying to back down from that as valuable. And there are many scenarios. I mean, look at look at many sort of new makers who are who are recently joined the community and become prominent right. in Power Apps, they started right. in Excel and they started in SharePoint mm -hmm. and it's it's uh, easy on ramp, it's easy to learn, it's adjacent to skills people yep. already have. Yep. And for a lot of use cases, it's all they'll ever need. You know, yep. for a lot of apps with my team or my oh yeah. small department, they really don't need the, uh, you know, this giant spaceship of a, of a data platform yep. uh, for certain apps. So. Um, there will be many use cases, and we'll continue to really invest in making sure those are strong. Um, it is just really where you get in that fuzzy middle of, you know, I'm, I'm getting up to enough complexity, and I'm starting to reach the limits yep. of, of what a certain source was designed to do. Um, uh, that, that Then it's the time to have that conversation. You know, what's the right architecture for this, and Agreed. where should it go? Mm -hmm. Cool. Ooh, yeah. next Migrating question. lists and libraries. Mm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. There's no third-party <laughs> tool that supports this. No. Yeah. No, there's, so there's not. So there's and not. Basically, yeah. And th this also is like flashback to how we were. Oh, maybe we should tell uh, the uh, tell the question oh, the real quick. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, uh, He's the yeah. answer, but what's the question? Yeah. question. <laughs> Are we playing <laughs> Jeopardy? Power apps Jeopardy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. The category. Power space apps. Power Jeopardy. space apps. Yes. <laughs> Any update on migrating lists and libraries from site to site with customized Power App being intact? So th basically people, this question is saying, I have a SharePoint list yep. or library. I have modified the forms yep. to use a Power App form. Yep. How do I migrate I that to come from one with spot it. to yep. another? I have a solution. Yes? Yes. UI flow. <laughs> that's that's possible. Yeah. That's possible. We are actually doing work actively right now with the SharePoint team for them to be able to call our backends and then be able to bring apps along. So mm -hmm. yes, this is under active development Great. right now. And uh, that's we were, I'm so glad to yes, see that. Uh, yeah, and that's I, nice. I think we're actually talking about in some of the sessions here at Ignite. Uh, mm -hmm. It is shipping soon. So yeah, it was uh, either yeah. in the keynote you were in on mo on. Tuesday or okay. Monday or, okay. or the uh, the yeah. all up keynote. Somebody mentioned yeah. it in one of them. I think it was in one of the office keynotes. But yes, this is mm -hmm. this is uh, this is on its way to production as we speak. Uh, oh. This yeah. what it, I remember when we were building the sample templates. Yeah, we were we had to take Ooh. some and couldn't right. snap them into the Power App right. portal. We had to put them on docs.microsoft.com right. because we needed the capability. You just had to go stand those list ups yourself. Exactly. And now that'll go away. Exactly. Yep. It's going to be great capability. Okay, number six. Also, we're, we're back here on the, the SharePoint theme again. So in okay. the future, will the ability to associate Power Apps with content types be introduced in SharePoint? So SharePoint lists and libraries, which mm -hmm. use those content types, automatically have the Power Apps forms applied to them. So I think said another way in less words is, yeah. thank you, we got yeah. five. Okay. <laughs> she, she says, um, yeah. or so I think the question is more like, uh, another way to say it is, 
if I take a SharePoint list or library and I associate it with a content type, will that list and library automatically hook up oh, those those uh, yeah. Power Apps forms that I've associated with the content type? I think the really important part of this question is the first three words. In, in the, the future. future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because today you, have yeah. it's, you, you can do that, yeah. uh, well, but you can check in the forms which content type your list is associated with and change the field depending on the content type you see. I, I think mm -hmm. this so is actually the second part of the question. Oh, oh yeah. I wait, think yeah. I, yeah. I'm reading ahead. Okay. The, the, I think the harder part is I just created a new list. I haven't done anything in Power Apps yet. Can mm -hmm. we somehow intelligently automatically pull a Power App out of uh, an existing repo and add it there just based on the decisions I made in the list. Mm -hmm. That's like an advanced, that's a pretty advanced version of the templating thing that we just mm -hmm. talked about. I think you'd have to create that logic sort of upstream of the list itself. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just think, I think we should look at how extensible that export templating logic is. In the beginning, it's going to be pretty explicit. Mm -hmm. Take this list, take this form, go. Um, uh, in in the future to make that dynamic and configurable is I think really where that's uh, asking. I think it's a great ask, um, uh, but it's not uh, it's not part of the first rollout wave of just being able to pull them with. I think it's a great ask too, yeah. but if we rewind yeah. to the question we just talked about before, yeah. you almost don't need this. Almost. I, I yeah. know. I, yeah. I know. It, it's really nice in yeah. certain situations, it's a good but step. if if you do have a list yeah. that's totally portable with all yeah. its forms there, and, yeah. and you're following a proper SDLC, yeah. you're going to move it from environment to environment right. anyway. You'll be able to select. I think this next question is: Will the libraries, uh, you know, support multiple Power Apps forms per yeah. different content type? Mm -hmm. So the list has three different content types. Load the right form per one. I think, Serge, where you were going yeah, is, yeah. you can actually do that inside one app, yes. right? You can just have the logic be, uh, you know, if content type x then load this screen or this yep. page that actually that's a better architectural pattern generally rather than trying to launch multiple apps in play we do a lot that's sharepoint special to preload an app that's on a list before mm. the even the full list loads so that you get faster performance when you click on a list item uh, and you'd be giving that up if you were loading multiple apps on demand right okay. and so um, once the whole app is cached and then you click on it and just one one screen loads dynamically you're generally going to get a better performance experience uh, in one app that way than uh, than multiple. So Didn't know you screen. were doing under that yeah. under the hood. Oh yeah, no, we, we do lots of uh, we do a lot of things specific to SharePoint and increasingly specific to Teams for embedding to make that embedding first class and special. That's that you don't get if you're just opening a general iframe on your website and putting a power up there. This question here is uh, we have to be cognizant of our time still, but <laughs> it, it's a very involved question. It okay. came from someone who was at my session yesterday. Okay. So the question is, uh, th instead of reading all this, it basically boils down to you have multiple Power Apps environments yeah. and they are spanned across the world. So okay. North America, Europe, Asia. Yep. And so now you, um, you have your customer support reps using Power Apps in each region. Okay. And so if someone is in America and they call into your phone number, it gets routed yep. to the North American uh, support center. Right. They use the app in the North American region, but tomorrow you go to Germany and you call in to follow up. Yeah. And now the uh, customer support center is in Europe and they are using the Power App deployed to the European environment. It really boils down to the question is, what do you do with your data to make mm. sure that even though I have two different front ends with the Power yeah. App, how do I what do I do with my data on the back end to make yeah. sure I don't have to replicate it or right. can I replicate it easily? Yeah. That's a good pattern. Here. Use SQL Server Azure. But the question yeah. is also, I want to use CDS yeah. here. I want the benefit mm -hmm. of CDS, yeah. yeah. I mean, look, I, the, the, from the dynamics perspective, right, you have a bunch of dynamics businesses running on uh, Power Apps today. I mean, Dynamics 365 for customer service is the pre-built solution for this, which is basically a Power App on CDS mm -hmm. um, for doing this. And there's global customers that have call centers all over the place. Typically, typically, the data is mastered in one environment and, in, and used even by people in different regions. Or you create the regional boundary based on the users the end users benefiting, right, more so than, than even the agents. So there's different versions of this scenario, right? I, as an end user, I'm in Florida today. I call into my North American support center. I have a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I log it as a ticket. It gets stored as a database in an environment in North America. I then, I'm literally flying to, to Europe tonight. I show up in the morning. I go back to the same website or the same app 
to inquire about the same ticket, that, that data is still in North America. It's still the same app. It's still in that environment. Nothing magically moved because I moved. Right. Uh, now I'm calling a website that is now a couple time zones away. I might see a little bit of extra latency there, but actually typically, uh, especially if I'm following good architecture patterns, that's not going to be a massive impact. Um, uh, and uh, and that'll all just work, right? Mm -hmm. Now, it's a different thing if you want the agent to move, right? And I have an agent who's working on an app in North America, but then tomorrow or as a, in a different time zone shift, I have an agent who's sitting in Germany. Um, you know, there, they still same pattern. They can log into data mastered in, in one geolocation. Um, if you have, it's really when you have truly separate instances. I want a completely separate Wall for legal reason right for something. legal reason right in one place versus another and usually when people are in that architecture they want to separate not synchronize <laughs> right? mm -hmm. and 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 that's a, that's a benefit is that i can separate it and say okay my my emea customers only have data in the emea region my north america customers only have north america region if they get on a plane you know they're still hitting the same app same website uh, same thing that said there are many data integration options mm -hmm. i can have one power app connected to multiple cds instances um, I can have one CDS instance doing data integration with another CDS instance. Um, so there are flexible options in the architecture, and I think it really just comes down to what is the scenario you're optimizing for? Is it data sovereignty? Is it local performance? Mm -hmm. Is it, you know, um, uh, and then, and then kind of getting a little bit deeper into how do you use those tools to, to achieve the right scenario? That's great. So yeah. it boils down to there's tons yeah. of options on how well, there are tons, loads of options. There's yes. more than one option <laughs> to do it. Loads yeah. of opportunities for further community calls to go deeper on the <laughs> We have yep. two questions left. So okay. this one, two Ryan questions and I left, no time. So we'll go, we'll go lightning, lightning round. round. Lightning, lightning round. round. Yes. Lightning round. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Question number eight. If you make a Power App virtual agent, how do you add it to a website? Do I have to build my website in some certain language in order to snap that in? It's just an iframe right now. So uh, and there's a little snippet of code that you pull in. So uh, right now, you can put it pretty much anywhere. Yeah. Outstanding. Yeah. The final question, currently when you upload an attachment to a list item in a SharePoint list, you're limited to attachments that are 10 megabit in si megabyte in mm. size or smaller. Will this be increased in the future? And just to clarify, this is not uploading a document or an a something to a mm. document library. It's an this actual is attachment to a list. Oh. To a list item. Yes. yes. It's with Flow, Power Apps calling Flow, or directly. No, I'm not. I'm yeah. not sure if this is. Okay. The, I'm not yeah. sure that. Um, I think Holden we'll have to clarify and, and follow up on this yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So one of the guys in the demo yeah. extravaganza, John, there you go. asked okay. that question, and yeah. uh, Reza asked a lot of the other ones as well. <laughs> cool, yeah. cool, so cool. Yeah. Good. Well, this has been fun. Definitely. Yeah. So thanks yeah. to all my friends for yep. coming here today. Thank this you. was Thank a lot you. of fun. Awesome. Uh, definitely yeah. a good time here today, talking shop. And so uh, I would just like to say every, and we probably all would, thanks to everybody yep. who's listening and, and joining us today or tomorrow or whenever you listen to it. Uh, we do not have a call in December, okay. actually. We're just going to chill for the holidays. Awesome. And then yeah. we'll resume back in January. Great. 2020. And, uh, 2020. Oh, yeah. 2020. Yeah. Oh, yes. oh, yeah. No, we're going back <laughs> in time. Call. Yeah. Back in time. <laughs> <laughs> Next call will be in the past. You better dust off my <laughs> flux capacity. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. So thanks again. I really appreciate you thank all you. coming. Oh, thank you. Of course. Thank you. Awesome. All right.